upon their circumstances and their activities or even their behavior because we really don't know people. Yes. How many have been misjudged because people don't really know you? Right. And sometimes you can be misjudged because people haven't spent enough time with you to understand who you are. Right. And that's why many of us have friends that understand us and they even love us even though we have some shortcomings and we're not perfect. They understand who we are and that's why they call us their friends. Right. Are y'all here? Right. Amen. I have good friends. Amen. I mean, I, I, I have friends that are crazy. I have friends that are great, and I understand. I have friends that are arrogant. Yeah. Come on, we all got a we all got an arrogant friend, don't we? We know that one. We y'all thinking about it right now on the job. Come on, somebody. And so we all have that one or two people that we say, you know what? If they could just if if, this, if they could just deal with that one little part of them, they would be an awesome person. But we still love them because of who they are. Yeah. Are y'all here this morning? Yeah. Go to Psalms chapter thirty. Psalms chapter thirty. Amen. Because once we hear the total story, then we'll be able, we won't be so quick to judge what they've been through. Amen. We won't, we won't judge them so quick after we learn who they are. Because so for some people, I thought they were a certain way until I got to know them and really until I got to know their story. There's always a story to everybody's life. Amen. And you don't know them until you've heard the whole story. You know, you can judge a person just off of just meeting them from a distance. There's some people I've met and I just say, oh God, I don't like them. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I can't, ooh, I can't do them. Come on, somebody. Y'all know that I can't do them. But after you got to know them, you say, you know, oh, okay, now I understand. Are y'all here? Amen. There's some people who we may think are depressed. Until you get to know their story and realize why they are the way they are is because of what they've been through. Yeah. And all they need is somebody to just help them get where God wants them to go. Yeah. Are y'all here? Yeah. Because it's through our circumstances that our praise yeah. comes out. Yeah. You need a praise in your life. Yeah. You need a worship in your life. It's the worship in your life and the praise in your life that, uh, that helps you to get through the things that you're going through. Yeah. Tell somebody, I need a praise in my life. So here we are, Psalms chapter 30. We're going to just read 1 through 12. The whole uh, chapter here is only 12 verses. And this is where we're going to come from today. Amen? And so uh, I, I want to I wanna come from this subject. This calls that. Tell somebody, this, this calls, calls that. that. Whenever you say the word this calls that, that means something had to happen in order for it to call something else. Are y'all here? And sometimes the way in which we act or the way in which we behave is because something has caused that. Somebody say, this, this caused that. that. So here's David. This is David. And um, um, he's uh, just, he's come out of, um, just came out of, you know, he's, he's fallen into adultery and he's trying to get his life back and trying to, you know, pray to God and, and just really get his life back to God. And um, he says here, I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. I want to deal with the first part of that verse. It says, I will exalt thee. So I say, I will, I will exalt, thee. exalt thee. And so, uh, uh, exalt means to give credit. In other words, David is saying, God, you know me better than everybody else. I have done some things in my life, but I will give credit to the one who gave me the life to breathe. He said, I will exalt thee, O Lord. Then he said, the only reason I'm here after all I've been through is because of God. In other words, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I what, be? And so David is giving credit to God for his life. He says, I will exalt thee, O Lord. I'm learning that there's two kinds of people. There are those who've been through stuff that causes them to praise, and then there are those who've been through stuff that causes them to complain about the journey. Right. Yes. Either you're going to complain or you're going to give God praise like David did. Right. David said, I'm going to give you praise. I'm a sinner. I know I committed adultery. I know I, I killed that woman's husband. I know I slept with that woman and got her pregnant. But God, I will give you praise because you didn't take me out. Are y'all here this morning? Amen. And so he said, I'm going to give you praise. See, in self-evaluation, 
I discovered that there are seasons that most of us go through that made us cry. Anybody ever cried through a season? And even seasons that made us laugh, and we couldn't do anything about it. But one thing we can do is give God the credit for where he has brought us from. Anybody have been brought from a mighty long way this morning? Anybody understand that you, you are somewhere different today than you were last week? Are y'all here this morning? And so he's given God the credit for all that God has done for him. And so then he goes on to say, he says, I will exalt you for you rescued me. You refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. In other words, maybe your translation says you have lifted me up. In other words, David is saying, God, you've lifted me up to the point that my enemies couldn't even reach me. Right. You've reached me, you, you, you lifted me up to the point that my enemies could not even take me out. Right. So he's giving God credit for lifting them up. He said, when I couldn't do anything for myself, God put me in a place the devil could not even get me. That's what happened to Job. Job, even though he was uh, uh, where he was, God lifted him up to the point that the enemy could not take his life out. He could not take his life. He could not take his body or his soul. He can take the material thing because those things can be replaced. But what he could not do is take Job's praise. And that's why Job even gave God the credit. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I don't know what's going on right now. I don't understand why I'm going through this, but I'm going to trust God because he is my helper. And he, y'all ain't going to help me this morning. Y'all just looking at me. He said, oh Lord, verse 2, my God, I cry to you for help. And you restored my help. He said, oh Lord my God, I cried to you for help. Who did he cry to? Lord. He cried to who? Lord. So that means we got to stop crying to church people. Yeah. You got to stop crying to those who cannot help you. Yeah. David understood, even though I've been wrong in my sexual situation, the only person I can cry out to is the Lord because he's the only one that can help me. Yeah. We got to stop wasting our time complaining and crying out to people who will only just hear us but they can't help us. Yeah. Are y'all here this morning? So he said, I cried out to thee. And he, in other words, nobody can fix your issues but God. Somebody said, but God. Verse 3, you brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Somebody said, a pit. He said, you brought me. He said, you healed me. In other words, he said in verse 2, you healed me. He healed us. Amen. In other words, he repairs the broken part. It doesn't mean that I won't have scars, but I can at least have scars and still give God a praise. Right. Are y'all here this morning? Amen. Sometimes we just, oh God, I got scars. I, I, I can't worship God. I can't praise him. It's the scars that gives you your testimony. Amen. You need the scars. Because your, your scars identify. When you look at a person's scars, you know they've been through something. Yeah. When you see a person's scars from surgery, you know they've been through surgery. Yeah. When a person has been cut, come on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all got some scars from the streets. And you said, well, that's when they cut me. Come on somebody. Yeah. But I can't help it. Y'all ain't going to help me. Some of y'all, I, I got friends and cousins who got bullets. Still going to say, well, that's when a bullet went in because they, they shot. I had a cousin who was shot in the head and when we went to the hospital uh, he was laying up in the hospital bed and uh, his head had, it had swollen up like two or three times his regular size. So we were we were uh, making his funeral arrangements because we just knew it's over, it's over. But he's walking around right now to this day, that was about 15 years ago. Bullet still in his head. Are y'all here? The bullet is still in his head even today, and he's still giving God the praise. God, I will give you thanks forever. In other words, it said, uh, uh, in another translation, I will give you gladness for say gladness. In other words, I have a song that says, I got a feeling.
say my praise, my praise makes the difference. My praise makes the difference. I want you to hold that person's hand that's standing next to you. See, some of y'all sitting down already. It's like, well, I'm, you, you can't hear a message like that and still be sitting down. You can't possibly, unless you're sick, able-bodied, something. I'm trying to teach you that it is in your praise. It's not in your sitting. It's not in your unparticipation. It's in your praise. And until you learn that, nothing will turn. I just got through saying, it is your praise that turns everything. So unless you don't want anything to turn, then you keep being silent. You keep sitting down. You keep just looking around while everybody else is praising God. But don't be wondering why things haven't changed. Don't be wondering why things are not different. Don't be, you know, blowing up the praises phones for them to intercede for you while you do nothing. Because it doesn't work like that. You can't waste a praiser's time to pray for you if you don't want to praise for yourself. Hallelujah. Somebody needs some things to turn around for them. You need some things to turn around and you need them to turn around this week. I don't need to know what it is. But if that's you, I want you to come. I got a pressing. I, it's got, it, it has, it's got to turn around this week. If it don't turn around this week, man. I live. Thank you. 